Okay. So give, give it 10 seconds. How do I signal to Neil that I'm ready? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to St. George's Camden Hill. It's a great privilege for me and a great joy to be able to stand here again after two and a half months of being shut out of the building. And I trust that in due course, in good time, we will all be here together again. So we must be patient and wait, but at any rate, we have this lovely backdrop, this setting for our worship this morning. So let us begin our worship on this seventh Sunday after Easter by making our confession. In penitence and faith, let us open our hearts to our risen Savior, who stands at the door and knocks. In you, Lord, have I taken refuge. Incline your ear to me and set me free. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In your righteousness, deliver me. Be my stronghold and keep me safe. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are my hope, O Lord God. Do not forsake me, restore my life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Savior Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. So, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the time or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, something wrong, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. For the wisdom that guides us we praise you, O God. I think. 
there was something wrong. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you have sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them and now I am no longer in the world but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord. Just before I start my sermon, uh, I would like you to read once again the collect for today, which is showing on your screen, because I will be referring to that during the sermon. Obviously, if you've got a printed copy in front of you, uh, please look at that. that. Thank you, Neil, for the technology for doing this. Nathan Jones is maybe a name that you have not heard of unless you are interested in the fortunes of Stoke City. Jones became the manager of Stoke City at the start of 2019. He had joined from Luton Town, which he had led successfully to promotion to the third tier of England's football leagues. And when he left Luton, they were on the course for promotion to the second tier, which duly occurred. He moved to Stoke, a much bigger club, viewed as a rising star in the firmament of football management. But things did not go well 
and he was relieved of his duties within a year. Now you may be asking, what is the connection between a football manager and this 10 day period between Ascension Day and Pentecost? This morning, I'd like us to reflect on this time between these two of the four major Christian festivals that take place during the year and hopefully deepen our appreciation of just how important it is for our journey of faith. I'd like to reflect on how the gift of the Holy Spirit impacts the lives of some sports people. And also, I'd like us to think about how the Holy Spirit can sustain us too. To allow the significance of ascension and Pentecost to truly seep into our lives. Because it is, of course, these two events that resulted in the gift of the church. And so significant were they for St. Luke that he recognized that his gospel only told half the story, quite literally. The Acts of the Apostles being the second half. In fact, with my talk about football and two halves, I thought there was something rather neat about that. But to return to Nathan Jones, he is a committed Christian and has been for many years. Reflecting on his time with Stoke City, he says, I had to look for a lot of answers from God and from within myself. He still believes that he's been guided by a higher force. He says, Christianity enables me to be honest, to have equilibrium, and to be a manager that they may not like, but certainly respect. And in the world which is exceptionally performance orientated, there are a number of footballers who have found their Christian faith has given them the bedrock of unconditional love that provides some equilibrium and support and certainly comfort. And so you will not be surprised that I made a connection with what Jones had said and today's collect, which says, leave us not comfortless but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us. Or as the prayer book says, send your Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us to the same place where our Saviour Christ has gone before. The Holy Spirit is the comforter, the one who brings the peace of God that passes all understanding. Perhaps you noted also that I said that Pentecost and the Ascension Day are the third and fourth of the year's major religious festivals. But I think it's fair to say that for many, they have been downgraded when viewed alongside Christmas and Easter. And that Ascension Day is probably the most neglected of all the major festivals. This year, our Zoom service on Thursday was attended by just over 20 people. Usually we're lucky to get 15. But really, if the true significance of the festival was many more. For Thomas Cranmer, the author of the prayer book, Ascension Day was to be observed with special honor alongside Christmas, Easter, and next Sunday's Pentecost. Cranmer's Collect for today is based on the antiphon that was sung at Vespers on Ascension. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, do not leave us orphans. There is a sense of separation after the Ascension, perhaps not as deep 
as that time between Good Friday and Easter morning. But once again, Jesus has left his disciples. All this is described by Luke at the very beginning of Acts. When Jesus is telling them not to leave Jerusalem and they will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Inevitably, this was another deeply uncertain period for the disciples, for the Virgin Mary and the brothers of Jesus, who included James. Not James the Apostle, but Jesus's brother, who is believed to be the author of the Epistle of St. James, and who would become a leader of the early church in Jerusalem. It's interesting that the Book of Acts and the Gospel of St. Luke are of equal length. In fact, that's not surprising because they cover the length of what was a traditional Jewish scroll. And the fact that Ascension comes right at the beginning of the second volume, so to speak, underlines how important it is. This is when the mission of God to reconcile his people pivots from Jesus's earthly mission to the work of the Holy Spirit. And to return to the reading from Acts, the words, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. This is the trajectory of the growth of the early church. And as that well-known theologian Buzz Lightyear might have said, from Jerusalem to infinity and beyond. Now, to return to today's collect and two genuine theologians, they put it like this. And not only shall the Spirit of God provide the comfort so needed within the veil of tears, that is the life of the Spirit, will exalt us, ultimately yonder, over the Jordan, over the river of death, to the place where Christ has gone before. The themes of the collect are absence, solitude, accompaniment, and passage to the kingdom of light, right through to the end and beyond the end. Nathan Jones has been sustained by the, period, by the Spirit during this period in the Vale of Tears. The accomplishment of the work of the Holy Spirit in giving witnesses to the ends of the earth means the Spirit is there for all who wish to access it. That is provided they are aware of the gift. Another football manager, Jurgen Klopp, the ebullient manager of Liverpool, who sit at the top of the Premier League by a huge margin of 25 points, once told a newspaper, to be a believer, but not want to talk about it, I do not know how that would work. Klopp has been very open about the impact of his upbringing in a Lutheran home and how his lust for life derives from his faith. It also gives him a sense of security. Klopp says, there is nothing so important to me that I cannot bear to lose it. And that is why I find I have no reason to fear. Klopp's faith has been liberating. For us, our prayer should be, perhaps, that our faith is liberating for us too. And this week, as we prepare to celebrate 
Pentecost next Sunday, let us reflect on the works of the Spirit. How do we do this? I suggest we can best do this by having a pattern of regular prayer. And if lockdown permits you to take 20 minutes out of your day, please join us for one of our three daily services. And if you don't know how to do this, please contact one of the clergy for further detail. Because it is prayer that allows us to use words from the Ascension Day Collect, to also in heart and mind thither ascend and with him continually dwell. And it is this prayer that sustains us and Nathan Jones and Jurgen Klopp to be liberated by our faith and to narrow the gap between heaven and earth. Let us declare our faith in God as we say together the words that are printed in our order of service. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus is ascended to the Father, his mission accomplished. We who are still in the world ask for his spirit to fill us with his joy. As we join together in prayer each Sunday, may our support for each other sustain us in faith and in Christian living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May Christ's prayer for us strengthen us in our mission of continuing his work in the world. We particularly pray at this time for those working on the front line, doctors, nurses, caregivers and we also pray for scientists and researchers searching for that vaccine for other treatment lord in your mercy hear our prayer <laughs> O lord guide the communities to which we belong into peace that there may be peace in our streets peace in our homes peace in our dealings that our loved ones may live and abide in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are waiting for clinical results and tests, those who await a doctor's diagnosis or an operation, support all who wait by, by an ailing loved one, all near to and awaiting the hour of death. We particularly pray at this time for Ron Swan, Harold Carter, Angus Sterling, Serena Wilkes, Mary Stewart, Jean Root, Shelley Miller, David Martineau, Amber Sinclair, Caroline Bennett, Robert Compton Jones, Henry Crouch, Tony Cook, Aaron Cook, Andrew Cowan, Anne Barclay. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We pray for the recently departed Anne Buckley, Jean Watts, Anita Freeland, Richard Ridlington, and for those whose anniversary falls during this week, Gisela Bishop, Maria de Bolis Gallinata, Joan Gold, Violet Davis, 
Andrew Clark, Mary Mason, George Stanyland, Harry Shipman, Clifford Lane. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us wave to share the peace with one another. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King rejoice. Let us give thanks and sing, and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice. Rejoice again, I say. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is our great high priest who has entered once for all into the heavenly sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. He is the one who has gone before us, who calls us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room, while they awaited his promised gift the life-giving spirit of Pentecost. Therefore, all creation yearns with eager longing as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Savior. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now in the company of Our Lady, St. George, St. John the Baptist, and all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit 
today and forever. Amen. Amen. Looking for the coming of his kingdom, as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, come cleanse our hearts and take us in our way. O Lamb of God, your grace impart and let our guilty fear depart. Of mercy, Lord, we pray. Have mercy, Lord, we pray. O Lamb of God, our eyes restore our guilty souls release. Into our lives your spirit pour, and let us live forevermore. In perfect family in perfect Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I'd like to highlight a few of the notices that are there on your service sheet to encourage you to join in this new regular pattern of worship throughout the week. These services, Monday through Saturday, three to choose from and to be part of, um, are very beautiful and help us to structure these days. At 6 p.m. each Monday, there is a Christian contemplative prayer group led by Jill Rowe, which is um, another anchor in the week. On Tuesday evening, this is an addition, our young professionals group will gather at 8.30 in the evening. That's every other Tuesday. So this Tuesday is our second time to meet via Zoom. So I hope that anyone interested can let me know and I will send you the link that morning. We continue with our study of Genesis and the story of Joseph at 1.30 on Wednesday. And we've started meeting weekly, which I think has helped us carry on this story um, in a much more vivid way. And please join us for that hour. And each Thursday at 11 is Poetry and Coffee, which has proved to be a smashing success. And Neil has included a poem um, in his sending of the link for daily prayer. So you can read the poems even if you can't join in at that particular time. So we have many opportunities to remain linked to one another in this fellowship of faith. And I do encourage you, if you haven't already, to make some time, as 
Peter was saying in his sermon, to uh, strengthen this bond with one another and with God through time for quiet and contemplation and of prayer. We come to our blessing and dismissal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And if you would like to join one of the breakout groups for a bit more fellowship as we have ended this service, please click on the link that Neil will send.